What's up, folks? Welcome back to Tactical Tortoise. My name is Trevi, and today we have another Chaos God to talk about from the new Chaos Demons 9th Edition Codex release, because we are deep in spoiler season and continuing to get Warhammer Community Preview articles about this Codex. We've talked about all the other Chaos Demons Codex uh, previews that have come out, and so I would be remiss if I didn't cover the Zinch one, because... I think this one might be the most powerful out of the ones that we talked about. We've seen that, uh, you know, Corn has some pretty decent damage output with its blood letters and uh, additional attack warp storm powers. Nurgle is extremely difficult to kill, but uh, this Zinch release might be absolutely insane. Now, one of the first rules previews in the article is uh, in this little section right here talking about pink horrors. Now, obviously, pink horrors have an ability to split into uh, blue horrors, which can then split into brimstone horrors once models in that unit are killed. Previously, this cost you reinforcement points, so in order to create the full wombo combo and make that unit as difficult to kill as possible, you'd have to bank a couple hundred points separately from it to buy those additional models that you would then split into. Now, you no longer need to spend reinforcement points to do that. And with a 3-plus uh, demonic save against ranged attacks, these big horror units are going to be super difficult to kill. Now, there's an asterisk here, uh, which goes to the bottom of the article, uh, which talks about how they only split on a 4-plus roll. So instead of banking and being 100% reliable, you now have to roll to determine whether or not they split. But those models that the Blue Horrors get split into will all have the same ranged attack, or at least they will have a ranged attack. It sounds like the ranged attacks in the Zine subfaction are going to be based on the model's profile. If we look down at the Flamer profile here, obviously it has a strength user attack, which means that uh, if we do downgrade that pink horror to a blue or brimstone horror, I imagine that they will have a strength user attack and the strength of that model will be reduced as uh, they are reduced in power level. So we're probably still going to get less powerful as models get split, but this unit sounds absolutely nightmarish to remove. I can imagine a huge obsec brick of these guys with their 3 plus invulnerable save against ranged attacks just chilling on an objective somewhere. Basically impossible to kill uh, at range to to entirely remove. You, you essentially get another 4 plus save against being removed because you'll just turn yourself into a blue horror or a brimstone horror. So you're, you're kind of considering the unit as having a 3 plus invulnerable save and a 4 plus damage ignore that a successful damage ignore basically just reduces the strength of the model is, is I imagine basically how it's going to work. But each model gets two of those. Uh, you can then turn into a, a blue and then turn into a brimstone. So yeah, it sounds pretty good to be honest. <laughs> now Previously, we've seen the upgrades to the Zinchian Demonic Invulnerable Save. Uh, these are the modal invulnerable saves where uh, demon units will get a, a different saving throw depending on whether they're being attacked by a ranged or melee attack. And they are also unmodifiable and unignorable. So things like uh, Tau Railguns are not going to be able to fire through them. Now, I did misspeak in the last video talking about Nurgle Demons, where I mentioned that the first value here uh, was actually the the uh, ranged value, but this is, in fact, the melee value. Uh, the ranged value is the second one. It's a little bit confusing, because if we are reading left to right, as you do in English, it would make sense that the ranged value would come first, given that the, the, the shooting phase takes place before the fight phase, but uh, it, it is what it is. So I think that threw me for a loop a little bit, um, but we do have here uh, very obviously that uh, Zinch demons get a three plus unignorable save against ranged attacks, although they're significantly easier to kill in melee. Now, this is a flamer profile, obviously, and we see some enormous glow ups here, basically with improvements across the board. We see their weapon skill increased, which is kind of nice to have an additional wound and attack, and their flickering flames moving up to d6 plus three attacks that automatically hit. Now, these also get a bonus from having the character version exalted flamers around, which will give them plus one strength. And because the flickering flames attack is strength user, that is also going to affect their ranged attack as well, putting up to strength six, which is a very important break point. Now, I have a very uh, a sneaking suspicion that we're going to see a lot of other ways to buff the strength value here. So that strength six is not going to be the cap for these guys. And I would be shocked if we don't get them up to strength seven or strength eight, where suddenly a unit of these guys is going to start 
uh, burning tanks down, basically. Uh, D6 plus 3 auto hits in a unit of 4 or 5 models is going to be, you know, somewhere in the realm of 30-ish attacks uh, at AP2, uh, automatically hitting winning on 4s, so you can probably force 15 or 16 armor saves on somebody at AP2, which is going to be a ton of damage coming out of this unit, new unit. We also have Screamers previewed with a very interesting new ability, Riders of the Immaterial Winds, which allows them to yeah, use a Deep Strike style redeploy every time they advance. Obviously, this is a little bit less useful than you would think immediately. Uh, off the top of your head, obviously, units that, that use a Deep Strike reposition are very good at uh, scoring secondary objectives and performing actions. Now, because the unit advances... Uh, they are not able to perform actions later on in that turn. So the, the use case of this is pretty narrow, and you you also, I imagine, will not be able to charge unless they have an ability to advance and charge built in. So they're mostly going to be able to use this to reposition. Uh, there may be some situations where they can use, them, use it to escape, although obviously not if they're engaged, because they can't advance once they're engaged. But scoring things like maneuver secondaries is certainly going to be good. If there are no other good maneuver secondaries in this updated Demons Codex, uh, or for Demons in Warzone Nephilim, then an engage in all fronts with a couple units of Screamers could be pretty helpful. It also is helpful just to reposition to, to screen yourself because you can uh, basically put them from the back of your deployments onto anywhere on the table, which uh, can be good to kind of plug holes otherwise in your in your uh, front line. So I'm interested to see how this unit actually operates on the table because it, this ability seems extremely powerful until you consider all of the, the cases in which it will be used. There are going to be a lot of situations, I think, where screwers have to have to use their advance, push across the table, drop into your opponent's deployment zone or something, and then wait a turn. And, you know, they may have a 3 plus save against ranged attack, so it may be that that's fine and that then they can capitalize on that positioning, but... Uh, two-turn repositional effects like that always tend to be a little bit more awkward than you would think they would be. Uh, last, but certainly not least, we have uh, Gaze of Fates. Previously, this gave you a 1d6 reroll for free if the spell was cast successfully. Now works a little bit differently. You can retain unspent warp points for your warp storm abilities, which we talked about in a previous video. Now, the thing that was a little bit confusing about the warp storm article was whether or not warp storm points were generated at the start of each turn or at the start of each round. Uh, the article made it sound like it was each turn, but all of the abilities that uh, surround warp storm points work from battle round to battle round, which which leads me to believe that that is actually how it's going to uh, end up working. So if that's the case, this ability uh, or this psychic power seems pretty corner case because I would have a sneaky suspicion that if you're getting you know, four or five warp storm points. You have to roll eight d6 and, and get a four plus on them to generate a warp storm point. So you're averaging around four or five, maybe, and you have some additional effects within the codec that may allow you to generate additional warp storm points. But if that's all you have for the entirety of the battle round, I have a sneaking suspicion that you probably would not have that many <laughs> retained over multiple battle rounds. Although that said, if you do roll a big number, maybe early on in the game, let's say you roll five or six on turn one, and all you want to use is that undivided ability for minus one to hit, then uh, you can just spend your three warp storm points i believe on that one and then use the gaze of fate to retain the rest of them but again very corner case really i think we'll have to see how the entire framework of warp storm and how it interacts with each of the chaos god legions before we make a, a final conclusion but uh, I, again i do think that the, this ability f feels like i don't know a little bit superfluous especially if this is not a, a spell that all zinch psychers know if you have to pick this out of your lineup I think that this one might not be picked, to be honest. <laughs> I think you'd, you'd much rather be doing some damage, you know, maybe using some referral gateways or something. Then. So anyway, that's it for this Warhammer Community Preview article for the 9th edition Demons Codex. Let me know down in the comments how you are liking my videos about these new preview articles and my analysis of them. And remember to keep it classy, folks, and have happy wargaming.